Hey, Jeremy here, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this cool faded background effect in Adobe Illustrator. Now, the past few weeks, I've been working on my new Webflow for Beginners course. You can check it out on Skillshare if you have a subscription, but I was working on the text and the slides and the presentation, and I created these cool backgrounds. So you can see, here's an example of how I was using it. Really, really cool, really nice. Just blends well with the text. It's very subtle, and I just like the way it's got that futuristic look. So I'm gonna break it down on how to create this. So you can see here, there's a few parts to it. So we've got one part, which is this gray gradient blob that goes on top of it, and it's got a bit of a nice dynamic feel to it. Then if I take that off, you see we've got this just faded grid, and you can see how the edges fade out nicely into the corner. It just adds that futuristic vibe to it, and I really like it. Now, if I pull those, those grid lines off, you can see it's just a background, a black background. So I'm gonna show you quickly how to whip that up really easily. So I'm just gonna duplicate this artboard. It's just a simple 1920 by 1080 artboard. Now I'm gonna drag a box by pressing M. I'm just gonna bring my toolbars up. So you can see the rectangle tool. I'm just gonna make it the black color that I have in my swatches panel, as you can see here. It's like a, it's a dark, deep charcoal -y color, which I like. I'm gonna lock that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go find the grid tool. On the line segment tool, right click on that, and you wanna go to the regular grid tool, okay? So what I can do is drag that out. And before letting go of my mouse, I'm gonna tap the right key, arrow key on your keyboard, and also the up key. So if you press down or the opposite, you can see you can decrease the grid. If you press up and right, it will increase the grid like this, okay? So you wanna sort of make it like even till it's really nice, just like that, I think that's cool. And now we've got a whole grid here with lines. Now I'm just gonna make this a nice gray color. I'm gonna decrease the, the uh, point size to maybe 0.75, just to make it really nice and thin. Now what I personally like to do is go to my blending mode. So go to transparency. And typically I like to go on overlay. As you can see there, it looks a bit light. Sometimes color dodge also works well. So you can see color dodge there. But you can also go ahead and like play around with other ones. So you can go screen. Um, let's go soft light. We've got hard light. You can just scroll through and see what works best. Sometimes I just go to normal and drop it to about like, you know, 80%, maybe go 50%. So you can see it's like heaps light. And I think I want to go with color dodge for now. I'm going to bring this up. I'll drop it to 80% there. And you know, we can make the color go white or gray or um, whatever we like. I think it's a little bit on the light side. So I'm gonna make it white and then just drop it down like this. So color dodge 40%, cool, that looks a bit better. All right, so color dodge at 40%. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I click on this grid here, okay? And I'm gonna make a mask. So I'm gonna click make mask. And you can see here, I'm going to make sure that in my transparency grid, the black, Vector mask is selected. I'm gonna drag out an oval shape holding Alt. I'm gonna make this white, so make sure it's on the fill. And you can see how it's cut off the edges there, as you can see the grid. But what we need to do is we need to make this um, more softer, like a gradient. So I'm gonna go to my gradient tool. Okay, I'm gonna do radial gradient. And you can see we've got like a white to the black. Make sure the black is the same color as the background. So I'm gonna drag it from my swatches and drop that on here. So you can see the black changed. So we can have a smoother fade out effect. So right now you can see it's fading out a bit. I might just um, go back and put the color dodge up to 90% so we can see it because it's a bit it's a bit dark. Um, as you can see here. So I selected this and put it back up to 100%. I'm going to click the mask again. I'm going to scale it up. You can go out of bounds. That's totally fine. So I think that's really cool. It's looking really, really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust in my gradient. You can see it's at 100%. I'm going to drop it to like 60%. And what it does, it brings in the oval shape and it brings it more in. So if I go maybe 40%, you can see it's starting to fade out a lot better there. So already we've already created this nice little effect here and I think it looks really cool. And I can always just adjust the oval shape and it will move the gradient inside that mask. So you can see I've got my mask here and we've got the um, white to black gradient and it's creating this cool effect on the background. Now, what if we wanna sort of add this nice little tone effect? I'm going to create a, an oval like this. So just imagine we've got this uh, pink shape 
I just need to get out of the mask. Sorry, I did it in the mask. Make sure you select out of the mask first. And then now I'm gonna make it here. I'm just gonna make it pink for you so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it gray on the fill. And I'm just gonna press G first. And I'm gonna go to my freeform gradient tool. So this is the third one here. Now what I like to do is I like to delete some of these points. I'll put the gray in the middle here. And then on the outside, I want to have the black color of the background. So you can you can shift click points as well. Like this and then do this. And you can move things around to get sort of different effects, different feels. So you know, bring bring some of the these in like this. Just to make it a bit off balance, etc. Okay, I think that's looking good. Now I can press V and just get out of that. Now what I can actually do is I'm gonna go back to edit the gradient so I can click edit gradient. And I wanna click on all and hold shift on all these points that I just made. And I wanna bring the opacity to 0%. Now what it's gonna do is make all those black at zero. So we've got this fade and then the middle section with this gray, this one uh, gray or white point. So we just made a gray is there. So now what we can do is drag it on top here. And what I can do is play once again, play around with those blending modes in my transparency panel and see the effects we can get. So usually like overlay or color dodge again, you can do light in screen looks pretty good. We've got color dodge there. So we get this like really cool neon glow effect. Like look at that. that looks pretty, pretty awesome. And like I can move it around and maybe make a duplicate of it and make it bigger. So you get these cool, cool little glow effects. Like that's pretty cool. But if you don't want that effect, you can just go maybe overlay. It's a bit softer. Or I think hard light looks all right. But I think screen works pretty well as well. And maybe drop the opacity like 80% there. And then you can see I can scale it up. And we sort of get this, this background effect. So you can see it's similar to this one. This one obviously is at 30%. So we can like, you know, drop this down maybe. And it just adds a nice little effect there. And what if maybe I just want to do a little bit of a color dodge in, in the back or something. I can, uh, you know, play around with this. And see, you know, how that look like, how that look looks like. And, you know, you can play around, but I think that's, that's what I like. I think it looks really cool. It's great for working with like a background. I can go ahead and chuck some text in. And there we have it. We've got our cool little background. Great for like little prezzies or basically just to make it look cool and fun. So really hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. If you want to see more design tutorials, especially in Illustrator and Photoshop, please subscribe because it really helps me out. Really thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And I'll talk to you in the next video.